The Harvard Business Review recently published an intriguing article, Five Things High-Performing Teams Do Differently, based on research findings by Dr. Ron Friedman. To quote the article, new research suggests that the highest performing teams have found subtle ways of leveraging social connections during the pandemic to fuel their success. The findings offer important clues on ways any organization can foster greater connectedness, even within a remote or hybrid work setting, to engineer higher performing teams. And surprise, three of the five key characteristic actions they cited are core principles we teach in our Appreciation at Work training. First, high performing teams give and receive appreciation more frequently. Second, high performing teams invest time in bonding over non-work topics. And third, high performing teams are more authentic at work. I believe our culture sometimes overemphasizes the need to confirm everything through research. Some truths and guiding principles are self-evident when we take the time to observe, reflect, and use common sense. The importance and value of appreciation falls in this category. Unfortunately, many business and organizational leaders still hold the misconception that the primary purpose of appreciation is to make people feel good. Wrong. While helping someone feel more positive about themselves and the work they do is a result when people feel valued and receive authentic appreciation, the larger, more important goal, which is supported by a huge body of research, is to help the organization function more effectively. As Friedman and other researchers have found, when team members feel truly valued and appreciated, good results follow. Productivity improves, profitability increases, customer service ratings rise, staff turnover declines, and much more. In fact, we have over 50 research citations about the research in our book. If we take the time to think about it, it's easy to see why this is the case. Let's lay down the foundational principles. Employees are people. We're social beings. To get tasks done, communication between team members is required. Communication goes better when trust exists and the need to defend oneself is minimized. Next, people have social and emotional needs. When our needs, social, emotional, physical, or some other are met, we're able to focus our time and energy on other aspects of our life. When they're not met, the unmet needs become a distraction and get in the way of getting things done. Finally, when people don't feel valued and appreciated, they feel insecure and are more likely to communicate from a defensive position, feel a need to prove themselves and their value, are more likely to compete with colleagues rather than work together collaboratively. They're more irritable and easily offended. Leaders, listen up. The point is this. If you are still holding on to the belief that teaching your team how to communicate authentic appreciation is a touchy-feely form of psychobabble, pull your head out of the sand. If you don't, you and your organization will be left in the dust by those organizations who accept the reality that teams who communicate appreciation to one another function better and outperform those who don't and taking the steps necessary to make this a reality in your organization will make you a more effective and successful organization. Thanks.